Four boys, three girls, one pregnancy. Two decades after having shocked doctors and nurses across the globe, the world's first surviving septuplets share their fascinating story. You do not want to miss this video. Story The McAfee Siblings Imagine being told you are about to have a baby after having tried to get pregnant for years. The sheer excitement mixed with a tinge of slight fear and nervousness are common feelings that parents-to-be experience after receiving such news. But now imagine being told you are not having one baby, but seven. It is probably impossible to imagine the kind of racing thoughts that would swirl through your head. But I assume that finding out that you were to soon have seven kids all at once would be rather nerve-wracking to say the least. However, this is exactly what happened to one family in Iowa in the United States. And unsurprisingly, it did not take long before they became a worldwide sensation. This is their incredible story. Kenny and Bobby McAfee had been desperate to expand their family for a while now. Unfortunately, Bobby was born with some problems that were likely to prevent them from being able to get pregnant. They exhausted all of their options and ended up turning to hormone therapy as a last resort. After spending a fruitless year on one fertility medicine, a doctor recommended them to switch over to the more powerful fertility medicine, Metrodin. As infertility has been increasing in recent decades, doctors have developed a wide variety of treatments to deal with this problem. From fertility medicine such as Metrodin to high-tech methods such as in vitro fertilization, which involves removing an egg from the ovary and fertilizing it in a petri dish. The options that are available nowadays are enormous, but even back then, in 1997, Bobby and Kenny already had a good amount of options. Of course, the couple had no idea if the medicine would work or not, but they were willing to give it a go, as they had nothing to lose and everything to win. You can imagine how happy they were when Bobby finally managed to get pregnant some weeks later. The medicine had worked, and nine months later, their first child was born, Michaela, a beautiful baby girl. The couple was thrilled, and now with their beautiful 16-month-old daughter, they were ready to add a little brother or sister to the family. However, this time, neither Bobby nor Kenny wanted to wait another year, so Bobby went on Metrodin right away. On their doctor's advice, they went for a lower dose. But while doctors can carefully control the number of embryos they insert with in vitro fertilization, fertility medicines are basically a roll of the dice. This means that one potential problem is that the chance of multiple pregnancies is drastically increased. This is actually one of the main reasons why the number of multiple births has more than quadrupled in the past quarter century and why multiple births are occurring more often now than at any other time in history. However, the loving couple wanted nothing more than to add another child to the family, so they went for it. Last time, it had worked out so well with their daughter Michaela. What could possibly go wrong? Some weeks later, Bobby went for her regular checkup and scan. And that was when the doctors found something rather unusual in their room. Something that was extremely rare and that they had not seen before. The scan seemed to show not one, not two, not three, but seven embryos. Seven budding human forms were currently growing inside Bobby. Kenny and Bobby were in shock, but they immediately declined selective reduction. They would remove some of the babies, giving the others a better chance of survival. But the couple did not want to lose any of their children and decided to go ahead with the pregnancy the way it was. News quickly spread and the McAfee's family were unwantedly thrust into the limelight. The parents received plenty of media attention from the press. Some people criticized them for not taking the selective reduction route, as that would have meant that there would be a better chance of all the remaining babies living healthy lives. Many doctors also voiced the concern at the time. The problem, they said, is that a woman who tries to carry more than three fetuses is playing a sort of Russian roulette with her baby's lives. Almost every woman with more than five fetuses miscarries and loses them all, or the babies are born too small or too premature to survive. And if they do survive, many will have severe lifelong handicaps. The risks are high. But the decision had already been made. And once the McAfee's had decided that Bobby would carry all the babies, the priority for her prenatal care was simple. If the septuplets were to have a chance, they had to be kept inside the womb as long as possible. The milestone the doctors were shooting for was 28 weeks. This is the critical point at which a baby's organs and nervous system are sufficiently developed to offer a good chance of survival. On average, triplets emerge at 33 weeks, 7 weeks before full term, and quadruplets at 31 weeks. No figures exist for septuplets because so few are born, but you can imagine the number would be even lower. To keep things as stable as possible, doctors ordered Bobby to bed just 3 weeks after the septuplets were discovered. 
and not much later, she was moved into the hospital where she could be put on medication to stave off labor. This way, she and the babies were also within easy reach of the labor team. Then came the big day. A team of 40 doctors and nurses were present, and after a six-minute cesarean birth, seven babies were born. Kenneth Robert, then Alexis May, Natalie Sue, Kelsey Ann, Brandon James, Nathan Roy, and finally, Joel Stephen. As they were delivered, each infant was taken into an adjacent room, placed on a warmer bed, and given a ventilator tube and an intravenous line. All the babies were initially listed in serious condition, which is actually better than expected, considering they were 10 weeks premature. While the family did not wish to be famous and did not want their lives to turn into a big show, people all over the world were, of course, following the news about the septuplets. And once the babies were born, the McCoffees even received a congratulatory call from then US President Bill Clinton. Despite their lack of growing space in the womb and their premature delivery, the septuplets were surprisingly big. Still, like most preemies, all the babies had trouble breathing at first. And even after the septuplets went home, they were not out of danger yet. As preemies, and especially as multiple preemies, they would continue to run a high risk of developmental problems. So over the years, doctors assessed their motor and cognitive development. All of this happened over two decades ago. So what has become of the seven brothers and sisters now? Well, luckily, they are all doing great. From their conception, birth, and nearly every birthday since, the siblings have been making both history and headlines. They are considered miraculous just by the virtue of their existence. And at the young age of 23, they have already achieved a lot. Before they could even walk or talk, they were rubbing shoulders with celebrities like Oprah Winfrey. And at the age of 10, they were offered a chance to become a reality TV family. This offer, however, was quickly turned down by Bobby and Kenny. Another amazing thing about these septuplets is that from the time they could talk, they started sharing their own language. The unique development is referred to as cryptophagia, and it is not unusual among multiples. Cryptophagia is a phenomenon of language developed by multiples, be it identical or fraternal ones, that only the children can understand. The word has its roots in the Greek crypto, meaning secret, and phasia, meaning speech. So it is basically the secret language of a twin, triplet, or in this case, septuplet. It has been reported that up to 50% of young twins will have their own twin language, which they use to communicate only with each other and cannot be understood by others. How incredible is that? A delay in the phonological development of one or both twins is said to be the main cause of cryptophagia. The children can develop the ability to communicate with one another without working within the grammar of their parents' language, thus possibly leading to short-term delay in the linguistic development of one or both kids. Luckily, the siblings have not experienced any kind of developmental problems whatsoever. After they were born, the family received an outpouring of support from the local community and government, including free funding for their education. And after graduating high school, all of the kids went on to make their dreams come true. The oldest septuplet, Kenny Jr., is now a carpenter, and his brother Brandon is a U.S. Army soldier. The other boys, Joel and Nathan, are both studying computer information systems, and they absolutely love it. The girls, Kelsey, Alexis, and Natalie, are all pursuing careers that relate to their passions. Kelsey is doing public relations, Alexis is focusing on early childhood education, and Natalie is passionate about sports science. Free education was not the only gift that they received. After their three-month stay in the hospital, the family was given a beautiful, newly built home from local business owners. Now that most of the kids have moved away, Bobby and Kenny have decided to donate the home to Ruth Harbour, a non-profit organization that helps women with unplanned pregnancies. What a beautiful gesture and a great way to give back. However, aside from all the intense attention from the international media, at the end of the day, the McCovey family are just a regular family. A very big and very happy family, that is. Some fertility experts still worry that all the attention that has been paid to the unhealthy septuplets could convince others that such births are safer and less tragic than they often turn out to be. Nevertheless, while she never set out to have septuplets, Bobby has no doubt that she did the right thing, and both she and Kenny are passionate about raising awareness around selective reduction. The procedure is commonly prescribed by doctors when an unhealthy amount of fetuses are found in the womb. Bobby, however, has been quoted as saying, well, then come to our house and tell me which four I should not have had. Could you imagine being part of a septuplet? Do you think you would like it or not so much? Share your opinion in the comments. I am very curious. I think it could be a lot of fun, but I can also imagine some potential issues such as a lack of privacy and alone time, 
And when you really have to pee, having to wait until your other brothers and sisters are finally out of the shower so that you can enter the bathroom could be annoying as well. See you tomorrow for the next video.